In this video, I want to talk about hybrid search. Hybrid search was built based on the idea that for a long time we were using keyword search to search our data, and it was performing well. But then semantic or dense search was introduced, and we were able to achieve a whole new level of performance. But our semantic search generally does not generalize very well to new domains. If our data is very different from what our embedding models were trained on, then semantic search may perform worse than something like keyword search. So hybrid search seeks to solve that problem by combining keyword search with semantic search and trying to alleviate some of the disadvantages of each. If we wanted to implement a hybrid search pipeline, we would take our document and use a smart tokenizer to create a sparse vector and then insert that into a sparse column in our vector database. We would then take the same document and use an embedding model to create a dense vector and insert that into a dense column. We would then be able to search both columns and then re-rank the results. And this has all kinds of advantages. It's perfect for situations where contextual specificity is extremely important, which means we're searching for specific keywords, but we still want some of the performance improvements of semantic search. It's also useful when we haven't had the chance to fine tune an embedding model on our specific data. In those cases, keyword search performs well, but keyword search mixed with semantic search can perform even better. Our dense vectors are high dimensional vectors containing mostly non-zero values. So every single value is gonna have some meaning associated with it. And it could represent all the different semantic meanings, relationships, and attributes of a document and capture a lot of the complex relationships between the features. And it's good for comparing our query vector and our document vector semantically. Once we use an embedding model to generate our query and document vectors, we could then use a similarity metric to compare them, like Euclidean distance and cosine similarity. Sparse vectors, on the other hand, are high dimensional vectors that contain mostly zero values, which means that the few non-zero elements are going to be highlighted. And the sparse vector represents each unique token within a document. It uses the BM25 algorithm to match keywords and find the most relevant document to our query. The sparse vectors are created with tokenizers. Tokenizers break text into smaller subsections, like words, subwords, or even characters. And we use neural tokenizers in many cases. For example, BERT tokenizer fast can take your document and split it into a lot of different tokens. And we use those tokens to create a sparse vector. And then once we have a sparse vector, we could actually create a mapping between every single unique token and the number of times we actually counted that token. Sparse search is typically done with a BM25 algorithm. It's an algorithm that was developed in the 70s for document retrieval, shows great performance, and ranks sparse vectors based on a sparse query vector. BM25 decides which documents are most relevant by checking how often search terms appear and then adjusting for document length and considers how common terms are in the entire collection. And that's what the algorithm on the right does. And at a high level, what this means is if we have a query, for example, like what are neural networks? then words that are gonna be very common in our documents, like what are, are gonna be weighted way less, or even weighted at zero, than the words neural networks, which are much rarer. KDBI uses an inverted index to facilitate BM25 searches, which means we map terms to the documents they appear in. And this means we could very quickly identify all the documents that contain a given term. Once we insert new data into our sparse column, all the underlying BM25 statistics have to be updated so we maintain an accurate search. 
Hybrid search takes an inbound query, creates a dense vector, creates a sparse vector. And then we could do two searches. We could do a BM25 search and a dense vector similarity search. Take the top K results from each, and then we re-rank the results based on an alpha parameter. So we can also, in KDB AI, we could run dense and sparse search independently. We don't have to combine them with hybrid search. And this allows for some very interesting search pipelines. For example, one disadvantage of hybrid search is that it uses this alpha parameter and it kind of mixes sparse results and dense results in a way where the ordering often gets messed up because things that can have a very high keyword score but a low semantic score would be rated worse than things with a medium keyword score and medium semantic score. And this is often not the best way to compare results. So when we're doing re-ranking, another option is we could take the top K sparse results and the top K dense results, and we can re-rank with a re-ranker instead of using an alpha parameter. And a re-ranker will have a much better understanding of the relationship between the query and document vector. Re-rankers actually have a much better understanding of keywords as well. And this means our re-rank results are, might be better than just using an alpha parameter. So there are both options that you could try. A re-ranker is going to be, of course, slower. Re-ranking with an alpha parameter is instantaneous. But these are both options to consider. So with KDBI, you could search uh, individually, which might be useful as an option to a user as well. If you're searching with semantic similarity, you're going to get extremely different results than when you're searching for keywords. So for example, if you're searching for companies, Often, you could try searching with keywords, see if you get good results. Search semantically, see if you could get good results. And then you could use hybrid search as a default to get the best results in general. Our hybrid search schema looks like this. We have our text that we're inserting. And then we have our sparse and dense columns. Our dense columns are super simple. It's just the vector index, which has our index type or similarity metric or number of dimensions for the vectors we'll be inserting. And our sparse column has an additional parameter called sparse index, which has the K and B hyperparameters. And we'll go over these K and B hyperparameters. But the idea with hybrid search is you'll be inserting your dense vectors and you'll also be inserting your sparse vectors for every new data point that you insert. Our alpha parameter is gonna be adjustable between zero and one. And the default is 0.5, which means we give equal relevancy to our keyword score and our semantic score. The alpha parameter is adjustable between zero and one. And if it's closer to one, that means we give more of a preference towards our dense scores. And if it's closer to zero, we care more about the keywords and the keyword similarity. And this is something that it makes sense to play around with because playing around with the alpha parameter can have a very real impact on search performance. So generally around 0.5 is good, around 0.7, which means a slightly bigger preference to dense search is great. But if your data is completely outside the scope of your embedding model, then having a score closer to zero will make a little bit more sense. Sparse search also has B and K parameters that are tunable at runtime. So we set them when we create our schema, but we could also modify them when we're searching. So the B parameter is between zero and one, and it's the document length impact on relevance. In general, documents that can only cover one specific topic should use a lower B, and then documents that cover multiple topics should use a higher B. And K is term saturation. It determines how much more relevant additional instances of a term make a document. 
For example, if our query was, what are neural networks? And our document is extremely long and mentions neural networks a lot of times. Well, if we have a high K, then every additional mention of neural networks is going to have a boost effect on that document. But if the K is low, then after we mention neural networks a few times in that document, those additional instances aren't going to give that document a boost. In general, I don't recommend playing with B and K too much, just because the defaults are generally good. And there are other parts of your search pipeline that are easier to tune and are going to have a greater effect on your search performance. That might be changing your data, that might be playing with alpha, that might be figuring out which embedding model is best. There are so many things that just have a much bigger impact on your search than B and K. But if you really want to go and figure out, okay, how do I get those like last little pieces of search performance, then being able to change B and K at runtime might be important to you. And here below, we have an example of using hybrid search with a K to BI client. We specify our dense query, which is our dense vector. We specify our sparse vector. We say the number of results, and we have these additional sparse index options of B and K. We could also specify the alpha parameter. There are lots of different use cases for hybrid search, and it's generally areas where our embedding model isn't really trained on this kind of data. One is legal document search. If we're searching through a vast database of legal documents, often our embedding models aren't going to understand a lot of the specific legal jargon. And for that keyword search is going to be extremely useful. And hybrid search is going to be more performant than keyword search, depending on your alpha parameter. For human resources and recruitment, often we're looking for specific keywords and specific skills and titles where keyword search is extremely important and hybrid search is going to generally perform well. We can also create a content recommendation system where we not only find similar content semantically, but we also want to add an understanding of specific terms the user is interested in. We could also do customer support automation. For example, for searching our knowledge base or documentation, often there's going to be specific terms that are specific to your company or your documentation that the embedding model won't completely understand. And for that, hybrid search is going to be extremely effective. Hybrid search is also a good add-on for a RAG. If we're creating a RAG pipeline with hybrid search, it's going to look very similar to a typical RAG pipeline. We have our data, we chunk it, we instead of embedding it, we embed and tokenize it and insert our vectors into our sparse and dense columns in KDB AI. And then when we have a user prompt, we embed and tokenize the user prompt. We do a hybrid search on a database, we return the relevant data, and then we can insert it into a large language model. And the interesting about large language models is if you're using an agent, they can dynamically decide whether you should use a keyword search or a semantic search based on the query. And this is something that is actually really interesting because they can do this extremely quickly. And I've seen APIs that have a neural parameter where you could decide, do you want a neural search? Do you want a semantic search? Do you want a hybrid search? And LLMs can understand based on the query and your specific data or a description of your specific data, which one of these is going to perform best. So this is something that can be considered. But in general, when you're doing RAG, you want the best possible results fed into your LLM. And a hybrid search is something that can improve the accuracy of your retrieval. And that's it. That's all I want to talk about today. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.